Thank God God doesn't do that. Seriously. God is so masterful. More than you and I deserve. So good. So compassionate. So absolutely fabulous. So what are these guys think? They're crying all night. Why should we go on? God has received us. God has left us. Blah, 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 blah. Joshua and Caleb were among these spies. They spoke up in faith. What did they say? The Lord said he has given us the land. Yes. We can't fall in fear and rebel against his word. We can win our enemies. Protection is gone. The Lord has dismantled them. His presence is with us. Come on, let's move forward. Those were these two guys. They knew their God. Do you know your God? If we know him, we won't give up. Never give up. Never give up on the brink of a miracle. Never give up even if you're never going to have a miracle. Because ultimately, it will be worth it. Ultimately, when you and I cross over to the other side and we look back, it will all be worth it. Even what you don't think is at the moment and what you think is not working out and what you think is going completely wrong, just look like Joshua and Caleb. My God will dismantle every enemy that stands against me. My God is able. He will take me in. He will win my victory. He will bring me to the other side. He will make sure. He will make sure that I win. You don't have to win every battle. Look at the war. Choose your battles. Win the war. Don't have to win every battle. The people, of course, are people, right? Especially if a whole bunch of them to deal with those millions that Moses had. <coughs> the next thing that the guys say in chapter 14, verse 10, let's turn them. Not even let's listen to them, okay? I mean, give them a chance to talk. Let us hear what they have to say at least once. No, storm them. Kill them. Destroy them. At that point, God had had enough. This is what I mean. People think that God will never ever lose patience. You completely got it wrong. I don't know which Bible you're reading. God will take it to a point. And he draws the line. And then you better be careful. Why? Because he's just about to drop you. Like he did them. That's a warning for us. And verse 11 said, God was asking, how many more miracles will it take before they believe in me? Will it take for them to accept my word? Why will I basically hang around with these guys and help them? What do I am I getting from these guys? I have for years looked after them and they are ungrateful Lord. Basically, that was what God was saying, right? The question is, what do we do in our crisis? What did we do in our tests? We all have tests, right? We all have tests. All. It's just some of us are more gracious in a test than the others have seen the grace of God yet. So you sometimes don't know when people are going through really hard times, right? Some people, you know that even if a pin has fallen, you'll know. Some people, it takes a lot to stretch them. Why? The shoulders are nice and broad. They have learned to carry weight. Yeah. They have learned over the years how to depend on God. They have learned that the Lord is the strength of my heart. The Lord will deliver me. The Lord will never forsake me. The Lord is at my right hand. He will uphold me. He will lift me. The presence of the Lord surrounds me as the mountains surround Jerusalem. So the Lord consistently surrounds me whether I feel it or not. I tell people, don't waste your whole life on emotions. You're not going to get far. You can't be crying every step of the way. Why? Learn to stand up and fight. Fight with what? Fight, walk your fight of faith. Pick up your sword of the spirit and learn to use it wisely. People who have learned to use the sword of the spirit learn to stand their ground. If you don't know the book, you don't know your God. If you don't know the book, you don't know your promises. 
courses. If you don't know the book, you're ignorant of your future. That's right. That means you're in deep trouble. That means when the devil comes and stands in front of you, you don't know what to say to him. Apart from I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. What else you know? Nothing. So, know the book. If you know the book, you know the master. So that's the secret. Unbelief. Consistent, consistent unbelief. The Lord was frustrated. In his anger, you know Moses also still went and did something else. He went back and said, Lord, please forgive them. Lord, please forgive them. Again, he did all that all over again. If you look at chapter 14. All over again, Moses said, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Verse 27, Lord, the Lord says, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who complain against me? I have heard the complaints that the children of Israel made against me. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in this wilderness. All of you who were numbered, according to your entire number, from 20 years old and above, except... I love God's except. Except for Caleb, the son of Jephthah, and Joshua, the son of Nun, you shall by no means enter the land which I swore I would make you dwell in. But your little ones whom you said will be victims, I will bring you, and they shall know the land which you have despised. But as for you, your carcasses will fall in the wilderness. That's exactly what happened. Everyone 20 years and above was destroyed over the next 38 years. And the younger generation who had a fresh hope in their God entered in to take over the land. Are you ready to take over your land? It's all about perspective, I told you. It's all here and here. You get this right, you got it right. You get it wrong, you'll never make it. Never give up. I was reading a story of a missionary several years ago in Africa. And he went there with his wife and his 